The garden was my sanctuary, a place where time seemed to slow down, where memories of my late husband faded into the rhythm of pruning and planting. It was my haven, my escape, until he arrived. Leo was young, full of life, and gifted with a quiet warmth that seeped into my days. I told myself it was nothing more than friendship, just a shared love for the soil and the blooms. But as summer crept along I felt something stir within me, a feeling I hadn't acknowledged in years. Our conversations became more than just garden talk and soon, the garden held more than flowers. It held secrets, desires and choices I wasn't ready to face. And just when I thought I'd found a delicate balance, my son returned, dredging up old memories, hidden truths, and forcing me to confront the choices I'd buried deep. Now I wonder if my heart's journey was worth the risk. The sun was high when Leo arrived for his first day at my garden, a place I had nurtured for decades. I had almost cancelled our arrangement, hesitant about letting someone else into the space that had become my sanctuary. But when he stepped through the gate, his calm expression and gentle smile somehow put me at ease. Good morning, Mrs. Morgan, he said, extending a hand. His voice was warm, steady, the kind that felt genuine. Call me Rose, I replied, shaking his hand. Thank you for coming. Leo set to work with ease, his movements deliberate and skillful as he assessed the garden's layout. He had a natural eye for design, a quiet confidence that surprised me, especially given his age. Overgrown bushes and stubborn weeds didn't deter him. Instead, he approached each challenge with patience and respect for the plants, as if he truly understood the spirit of the garden. Throughout the day, I couldn't help but be drawn to his attentiveness, the way he asked about each flower bed, each tree, each patch of earth that I had tended to for so many years. I found myself telling him stories of my husband, of how we'd planted the first rose bush together, of the seasons we had shared in the garden. He listened, never interrupting, his gaze soft, his focus unwavering. As the hours passed, I felt a warmth I hadn't known in years, a sense of companionship that seemed as natural as the blooming flowers around us. And though I reminded myself that he was just here for work, just another helping hand, I couldn't ignore the gentle thrill that lingered long after he left that evening. Over the weeks, Leo became more than just a landscaper. Each morning, he arrived with fresh ideas for the garden, sketches he had drawn up, plans for breathing new life into the space. And with each project, each shared idea, our conversations grew deeper, filled with moments of laughter and mutual understanding that surprised us both. One day, as we pruned the hedges along the garden's edge, he paused, looking at me thoughtfully. I can tell this garden means a lot to you, Rose. It's like, each part of it holds a piece of you. His words struck a chord, a reminder of the life I had built here, the memories I had cultivated with my late husband. It does, I replied softly. This garden is more than just plants. It's a history. A life. Leo nodded, his gaze filled with an empathy that felt almost too intimate and in that moment I felt a connection that went beyond our shared love for gardening. There was a quiet understanding between us, an unspoken bond that seemed to grow stronger with each passing day. As we continued working together, I found myself looking forward to our time in the garden, to the quiet companionship that seemed to blossom in the spaces between words. And though I told myself it was just friendship, a simple connection— I couldn't ignore the gentle thrill that stirred within me each time he looked my way. My granddaughter Claire was the first to notice the change. She visited often, bringing her bright energy and youthful optimism that always brought a smile to my face. But lately, she had been casting curious glances my way, her eyes lingering on the garden, on Leo, with a look that was both inquisitive and wary. One afternoon as we sat on the porch sipping iced tea, she turned to me, her gaze thoughtful. Grandma, you seem… different lately. Happier. Is everything okay? I smiled, brushing off her question. Oh. I'm just enjoying the summer, and Leo has been a great help with the garden. She nodded, though I could see the doubt in her eyes. He's here a lot, isn't he? Yes, well, there's a lot of work to be done, I replied, keeping my tone light. But her words left a lingering tension, a quiet worry that perhaps my connection with Leo wasn't as subtle as I'd thought. As the days passed, I felt Claire's watchful eyes on us, her subtle questions, her quiet suspicions. And though I tried to keep my distance to maintain the boundaries I had set, 
I found it harder to ignore the growing affection I felt for Leo, the joy that his presence brought to my life. But alongside that joy came a quiet fear, a reminder that our connection, our hidden moments, were fragile, and that the love I had found was both beautiful and dangerous. One evening, after a long day of planting, Leo and I sat on the garden bench, the scent of freshly turned earth and blooming flowers filling the air. The sun was setting, casting a warm glow over the garden, and for a moment we sat in silence, lost in the beauty of the moment. I have to thank you, Rose, Leo said softly, his gaze steady. Working here, it's given me a sense of peace I didn't know I needed. His words touched me, a reminder of the quiet companionship we had shared the bond that had grown in the gentle rhythm of gardening together. I looked at him, feeling a surge of emotion, a mixture of gratitude and something deeper, something I hadn't felt in years. Leo, I began, my voice barely a whisper, I'm the one who should be grateful. You've brought life back into this garden and into my life. He reached out, his hand covering mine, his touch warm and reassuring. For a moment we sat like that, our hands intertwined, the unspoken words between us heavy with meaning. And then slowly, he leaned in, his lips meeting mine in a kiss that was both tender and filled with longing. The world seemed to fade, leaving only the warmth of his touch, the quiet beauty of the garden, and the depth of the connection we had found. When we finally pulled back, I felt a mixture of joy and guilt, a reminder of the line we had crossed, the boundary we had broken. But as I looked into his eyes, I knew that this was a connection I couldn't deny. A love that had blossomed in the quiet corners of my heart. A gift that had brought me both happiness and uncertainty. From that evening on, Leo and I shared a series of quiet, hidden moments. Stolen glances, whispered words, and secret embraces beneath the shade of the garden's trees. Each encounter was filled with a mixture of passion and restraint. A delicate balance of love and caution that left me both exhilarated and anxious. We met in secluded corners of the garden, sharing conversations that went beyond plants and flowers, diving into dreams and fears that we hadn't dared to voice before. I felt alive, rejuvenated by his presence, and yet a part of me knew that our love was fragile, that it existed in a space that was as delicate as the petals of the roses we tended. But as much as I cherished our secret affair, I felt the weight of our love, the quiet dread that came with each hidden kiss, each whispered confession. I knew that if anyone found out, especially Claire, the life I had built could crumble, the relationships I had cherished could be damaged beyond repair, and yet, despite the risks I chose to live in the moment, to savor the joy I had found, even as I felt the shadows of doubt creeping in, a reminder that our love was both a gift and a gamble. Just as I thought I had found a balance, a way to keep our love hidden, my son, Oliver, arrived unexpectedly, bringing with him a storm of emotions and memories I had long buried. His return was both a joy and a challenge, a reminder of the past we had shared and the secrets we had kept. Oliver had always been distant, his relationship with me strained by years of misunderstandings and unspoken regrets. He looked around the garden with a critical eye, his gaze lingering on Leo with a hint of suspicion that made my heart race. Mom? Who's this? he asked, his tone casual but laced with an undertone of curiosity. This is Leo, I replied, forcing a smile. He's been helping with the garden. Oliver nodded, his expression unreadable. But as he looked between us I sensed that he knew more than he let on, that he could see the connection we shared, the bond that had grown in the quiet of the garden. And as I watched him, I realized that my secret love was in jeopardy, that the life I had built— the family I had cherished, was at risk. And though I wanted to believe that love could conquer all, I knew that reality had a way of intruding on even the most beautiful dreams. Since his return, Oliver had been spending more time in the garden, observing both me and Leo with a quiet curiosity that made me uneasy. He often joined me in the afternoons, asking about my memories of his father, a topic we rarely discussed. I sensed that he was looking for something more, perhaps hoping to understand the family dynamics that had always felt elusive to him. One afternoon, while I was pruning the roses, Oliver approached me, his tone tentative. Mom, I can't help but feel like there's something you're not telling me, something about Dad. I paused, feeling a familiar ache at the mention of my late husband. 
Our marriage had been a mix of love and struggle, a bond we'd held together through both joy and hardship. But there were things about my husband that I'd never shared with Oliver, pieces of the past I'd chosen to keep hidden for his sake. Your father was a good man, I replied carefully. He loved us both, but he had his own battles, his own secrets. Oliver's gaze held a quiet intensity, a determination that left me unsettled. I want to know the truth, Mom. I feel like, like I never really knew him, and I think it's time you told me everything. As I looked into his eyes, I realized that the secrets I had kept were no longer mine to hold, that the past I had buried was resurfacing, demanding to be faced. I took a deep breath, bracing myself for the memories that would follow, knowing that this was a journey we would have to take together, a path that would bring both healing and pain. One afternoon, as I shared a private moment with Leo in a secluded part of the garden, I felt a sense of peace, a joy that had come from finding love once more. He held my hand, his touch gentle yet filled with a quiet strength that left me feeling both comforted and exhilarated. But as we stood together, lost in each other's presence, a shadow appeared from the corner of my eye. I turned, heart racing, only to see Oliver watching us from a distance, his expression a mixture of confusion and hurt. I quickly stepped back, my pulse racing as I tried to appear nonchalant. Oliver, I didn't expect you out here, I said, my voice unsteady. He looked between Leo and me, his gaze filled with a quiet suspicion that left me feeling exposed. Mom, is there something going on between you and Leo? His voice was laced with disbelief, his tone a stark reminder of the boundaries I had crossed. I took a deep breath, forcing a smile. Leo and I are just… close friends. He's been helping with the garden, and we've gotten to know each other well. Oliver didn't respond immediately, his gaze lingering on me with a mixture of doubt and disappointment. I felt the weight of our hidden love pressing down on me, a reminder that the life I had built, the relationships I cherished, were hanging in the balance. As he turned and walked away, I realized that our love was on the verge of being discovered, that the connection we had found could crumble under the scrutiny of family and judgment. The next morning, Oliver confronted me, his expression a mixture of frustration and confusion. I sensed that he had pieced together more than I wanted him to, that the boundaries I had tried to keep were no longer enough to hide the truth. Mom, I don't know what's going on between you and Leo, but it's... It's not right, he began, his voice laced with both accusation and hurt. He's young enough to be your son. Have you thought about what this, what this means for our family? I felt the weight of his words, each one a reminder of the risks I had taken, the boundaries I had crossed. I looked at him, feeling a mixture of shame and defiance, a realization that the choices I had made had brought both love and loss. Oliver, I know this isn't easy for you to understand, I replied softly. But Leo, he's been a source of happiness, a light in my life that I haven't felt in years. I never wanted to hurt anyone, I just, I just wanted to feel alive again. He looked away, his expression pained, his voice barely above a whisper. But what about Dad? What about the life you built together? Doesn't this, doesn't this disrespect everything he stood for? His accusation cut deep, a painful reminder of the love I had shared with his father, the loyalty that had bound us even after his passing. But as I looked into Oliver's eyes, I knew that my love for Leo was as real as the love I had once known, a connection that had brought me joy, even in the face of judgment. I understand your feelings, Oliver, I said, my voice filled with both sorrow and resolve, but my love for your father and my love for Leo are two different things. I don't expect you to understand, but I hope you can accept that this, this is part of my journey. He looked at me, his gaze filled with a mixture of sadness and disappointment, and as he turned to leave, I felt the weight of our choices pressing down on me, a reminder that love, even in its beauty, could come at a cost. The days that followed were filled with a quiet tension, a distance that grew between me and Leo, a reminder of the difficult choices we both faced. I felt the love we had shared, the joy he had brought to my life, but I also knew that my loyalty to my family, my role as a mother and grandmother, was a bond I couldn't ignore. One evening, Leo and I met in the garden, the same place where our love had blossomed, now filled with a sense of finality, a quiet understanding that our journey was nearing its end. Helen, he began, 
his voice filled with a mixture of pain and acceptance. I know that this, what we have, it's not easy. And I don't want you to feel torn. I don't want to be the reason you lose your family. I looked at him, feeling the warmth of his presence, the depth of the connection we had shared. But as I took his hand, I realized that the love I felt for him, though genuine, was a gift that could only live in the quiet of the garden, a memory that would remain even as we parted ways. Leo, I will always be grateful for what we shared, I replied, my voice trembling. But I think it's time for us to say goodbye. I have to put my family first. I have to protect the bonds I have with them. He nodded, his gaze filled with understanding, though his expression held a sadness that left me feeling both comforted and heartbroken. We shared a final embrace, a tender goodbye that held all the love, all the memories, all the joy we had found in each other's presence. And as he left, I knew that I had made the right choice, that my loyalty to my family, my love for my son, was a bond that could not be broken, even as my heart ached with the loss of the love I had found. The days after Leo's departure were filled with a quiet sadness, a sense of emptiness that lingered in the garden, in the spaces we had once shared. I spent my days tending to the plants, each bloom a reminder of the love we had found, the happiness that had come and gone like the seasons. One afternoon, as I watered the roses, Oliver joined me, his expression softer, his presence a comforting reminder of the family I still had, the bonds that had carried me through both joy and sorrow. Mom, he began, his voice gentle, I know things have been complicated, and I may not understand everything, but I just want you to know that I still love you. That's never going to change. His words brought a tear to my eye, a mixture of gratitude and relief that filled me with a sense of peace. Thank you, Oliver. I never meant to hurt anyone. I just wanted to feel something, to remember what it was like to be loved. He nodded, his gaze filled with empathy. I understand, Mom, and I don't want you to feel guilty for that. I just, I want you to be happy, whatever that looks like. We shared a quiet moment, a mutual understanding that our journey toward healing had begun, that we were both moving toward a place of forgiveness, a place where love, in all its forms, was something to be cherished. In the days after Leo's departure, Oliver and I spent more time together, sharing quiet moments in the garden that had once been my sanctuary and had now become a place of renewal. Our conversations were filled with the honesty and vulnerability I had once feared, but now embraced as a path toward healing. One evening, as we sat together on the porch, Oliver looked at me with a mixture of compassion and curiosity. Mom, I've been thinking about everything, about Dad and the life you've had since he passed. I think I'm beginning to understand what it must have been like for you. I didn't realize how lonely you'd been. His words touched something deep within me, a reminder of the solitude I had lived with for so long, the quiet ache I had carried in my heart. It hasn't been easy, I admitted softly, but the garden helped, and for a time, Leo helped too. Oliver nodded, his gaze thoughtful as he looked out over the garden. I may never fully understand, but I want you to know that I respect your choices, Mom. I just, I want you to know that you're not alone. I reached over, taking his hand in mine, feeling a surge of gratitude for the bond we had rebuilt, the love that had carried us through both joy and sorrow. Thank you, Oliver. I'm grateful for you, more than you know. And I want you to know that my love for you has always been constant. He smiled, a quiet warmth in his gaze. And in that moment, I knew that the journey we had taken, the challenges we had faced, had brought us closer, had taught us both the value of acceptance and compassion. And as we sat together, I felt a sense of peace, a knowledge that the choices I had made, the love I had found, had led me to a place of healing. A place where forgiveness and understanding bloomed alongside the memories of the past. With Leo gone, and my relationship with Oliver strengthened, I found myself spending more time in quiet reflection, journaling my thoughts, processing the emotions that had filled my life over the past months. Each word I wrote felt like a piece of my journey, a testament to the love and loss that had shaped me. In my journal, I penned a final letter to Leo, a farewell that held all the gratitude, all the love, all the memories we had shared. Leo, I began, the words flowing freely. Thank you for bringing joy back into my life. 
for showing me that love is timeless, that it exists beyond age and convention. Though our time together was brief, it was filled with a richness that I will carry with me always. I wish you happiness, love, and success in all you do. You will always hold a special place in my heart. As I closed the journal, I felt a sense of closure, a quiet acceptance that settled over me like the gentle rustle of leaves in the garden. I knew that while our love had been fleeting, it had left a lasting impact, a reminder of life's beauty, and the strength that comes from embracing both joy and sorrow. And though the memory of Leo lingered, a gentle reminder of the love we had found, I knew that I was ready to move forward, to embrace the future with both courage and gratitude. As the days turned into weeks, I found myself embracing a new chapter, a life filled with small moments of joy and fulfillment. I reconnected with old friends, attended local events, and even joined a gardening club, finding a sense of purpose and companionship that left me feeling both grounded and free. Each morning I tended to the garden, my hands working the soil, each plant a reminder of the love and memories that had filled my life. The roses bloomed with renewed vigor, their colors vibrant, their scents sweet, a symbol of the journey I had taken, the growth I had embraced. I found joy in the simple pleasures of life, in the laughter of friends, in the warmth of the sun, in the gentle rhythm of each day. I no longer felt the weight of loneliness, the ache of solitude that had once filled my heart. Instead, I felt a sense of fullness, a knowledge that I had loved deeply, lived fully, and embraced the beauty of both love and loss. One afternoon, as I worked in the garden, a neighbor stopped by, admiring the flowers, commenting on the vibrancy of the blooms. You have a gift, Rose, she said, her voice filled with admiration. This garden is magical. Her words brought a smile to my face, a quiet satisfaction that filled me with a sense of pride. I realized that the garden, much like my life, was a reflection of the choices I had made, the love I had given, the strength I had found. And in that moment, I knew that I was ready for whatever lay ahead, that the future was filled with possibilities waiting to be embraced. As the seasons changed, I found myself attending a community garden gathering, surrounded by people who shared my love for the soil, the beauty of nature, the joy of watching life bloom. I felt a sense of belonging, a thrill that reminded me of the journey I had taken, the love I had found, the lessons I had learned. I met new acquaintances, shared laughter and stories, each connection a reminder of the richness that life had to offer. I felt a quiet confidence, a sense of excitement for the future, a knowledge that I was ready to embrace whatever lay ahead, with an open heart and an unburdened spirit. Looking back, I realized that while love had come and gone, it had left a mark on my heart, a legacy of memories that I would carry forward. The garden had been my sanctuary, a place where I had loved, lost, and found myself. And as I stood at the threshold of a new beginning, I felt a sense of peace, a quiet joy that filled me with gratitude for the journey that had brought me here. In the gentle light of the setting sun, I felt a thrill of possibility, a knowledge that I was ready to live fully, to love deeply, to embrace each day with both courage and grace. And as I looked toward the future, I knew that I was ready to create new memories, to build a life filled with love, laughter, and the beauty of each moment. With a heart unburdened by the past and a spirit filled with hope, I walked forward, embracing the endless possibilities that lay ahead. Months later, as I looked out over the garden, I felt a quiet satisfaction, a knowledge that the choices I had made, the love I had known, had brought me to this moment. The roses bloomed, the garden filled with life, each plant a reminder of the strength, the resilience, the beauty that had carried me through both joy and sorrow. I had loved deeply, lived fully, and found a sense of self that had brought me peace. And as I watched the sun dip below the horizon, casting a golden glow over the garden, I knew that I was ready for whatever life had to offer, that the future was a gift waiting to be embraced. With a heart filled with gratitude and a soul unburdened by regret, I looked toward the days ahead, ready to live, to love, and to embrace each moment with an open heart.